It is time for a bunch of random generators to create us a football player in Football Manager 2024. Huh? The purpose is just that, my friends. Using various random generators for numbers, names, countries, etc., we will be creating a player and following his entire career in FM24. Due to the nature of the randomizers, we don't know what we're gonna get. A superstar striker, a journeyman defender, a complete scrub of midfield, that's really the magic of it all. But with that in mind, and the amount of things to roll on for attributes, I do get 5 mulligans, so if I think a stat is too low for whatever reason it is, I can use a mulligan to reroll. But the caveat is that once a mulligan is used, I cannot reroll for that category again. So whatever number I get, higher, lower, or perhaps the exact same, we're stuck with that for that attribute. Oh, right, yeah, I should probably mention this because I did this all in an old camera and microphone. Those were not positioned in the right place and had some technical difficulties with it. I ended up kind of reshooting everything. I'll probably mention it again on the camera side of the spectrum as I'm explaining all the rules that I did. Let's just go ahead and roll the intro, shall we? Alright, so to start off, I'm gonna be walking through what I did quite a few weeks ago initially on an old camera in which the microphone wasn't exactly plugged at, uh, it wasn't the best quality both for the picture and the audio side of the spectrum, so I'm just redoing that and walking through exactly what I did during the whole draw process for the random numbers, random wheels, name, etc. So you can kind of see the editor is going to be on the right hand side, the random name generator and some of the random wheel generators will be on the top left and then on the bottom left there will be just a number generator for, for attributes and all of that. So let's move on to that and kind of get started where we did first with the names. Okay, so once clicking on generate random names, we've got three names in question here. Craig Proctor, Brendan West, Christopher Ray. So the way I did it is that I then went to the number generator on the bottom, uh, between 1 to 3, made the first names for Craig, Brendan, and Christopher, 1, 2, and 3 respectively. It lands on 2 initially for Brandon for the first name, and then the same thing with the first name, la sorry, with the first last name, second last name, third last name. So Proctor 1, West 2, Ray 3. And that eventually landed on Proctor, so that makes it Brandon Proctor for the character's name. Alright, new day here, voice slightly better, daylight somewhat in the background, uh, recording these accordingly just due to my own sickness and whatnot, but in this particular instance what ended up happening was the sorting for the main position that our randomly generated player was going to start playing. The idea behind it was using the wheel to select the default position for them, their natural 20, and then from there sorting things out eventually in the later rounds uh, between like 1 through 15 instead of a 1 through 20 on any sort of attacking positions, uh, 0 through 5 on defensive positions because as you can see here we ended up getting a midfielder on the right as the natural position for the player. So following the parameters, we're making them good in the midfield and the attacking midfield portions and just uh, meh to non-existent in terms of playing defensive positions and even at striker as well. Okay, so after this, we are going ahead and sorting for the race of the player through the random generated wheel. And as you can see, we landed on Asian as the ethnicity for the player, so we're going to go ahead and go into that. And over the next few spins of the picker wheels, you're going to be kind of seeing coming across the screen. What I ended up doing was sorting for all the different physical aspects of the player in terms of their hair color, the hairstyle that goes with it, and we're going to 
just kind of go through those fairly quickly here and move on to the bigger uh, statistics like height and weight and things of that nature as well just to show those off and then move into the attributes which were really the key essential parts here as a whole this is just sort of a nice building blocks for the overall player and letting the random generator wheel decide all of that as we went through it so for height and weight which are next height is going to be between 150 to 210 centimeters as the measuring stick we'll throw that in there first and then for weight it is a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 120 so okay so first let's go ahead and sort it for height which looks like we get 175 centimeters out of that which roughly translates to i believe it's five foot seven five foot eight in terms of uh feet and inches so that's fairly average height wise okay then from here we will change it over to 50 as the minimum maximum for 120 kilograms wise to roll for the weight and we get 99 kilograms uh that makes them about uh, 218 219 pounds so we kind of have a mini tumble hero ishii in our hands here which personally i'm a fan so to follow that we did go ahead uh with the country picker wheel next on the rolls i initially made the decision because they are of asian heritage to sort the inputs by asian countries first and roll that for their primary initial country and then eventually make a roll for a secondary country shortly after that so with this initial roll you can see here it eventually landed on south korea the second row didn't take too long after that, this time around all countries were included and after a couple seconds here, Andorra ends up being the secondary country. Given the size of it, I'm not sure if Proctor will ever play for them, but the possibility is at least there. So in this particular section we just end up sorting through the reputations for home, world, and then the regular reputation of the player, which I just ended up doing a random 1 through 20 on the random generator number for those, so fairly simplistic stuff, so we'll keep it moving along. Next up, we are doing the dominant foot for the player between left and right, and it turns out to be the right foot, so that will be the natural 20 on that. But we're also going to do a 1 through 20 on the random number generator to determine what their left foot capability is going to be. And that turns out to be a 14, which is pretty good, all things considered. So this next section is where I ended up rolling for all of the other positions for our particular player in Brendan Proctor. The way I structured it, because he ended up being a midfielder for his natural position, all the attacking midfield positions and the striker position would be uh, rolled as a 1 for the minimum. 15 for the maximum and then any defensive positions from the wings to dm the defensive ends uh and goalie well goalie stayed at zero just because it would mess all the other stats up but for the other positions it was a minimum of zero maximum of five for that so you can kind of see the results as we are going through here uh proctor very much has kind of a makeup of a right winger more than anything both on the regular midfield side and then on the attacking midfield a little bit of experience on the central and left hand portions uh not so much as a striker though and then defensively just not all there to begin with again this would have been much better if the actual video and recording that i did had survived accordingly without the technical difficulty so this is the best that i can do Given circumstances, I do want to get at least something out, so uh, let's keep moving. Hey, there's sunlight now. Uh, we're just rolling with it. So after getting the positions, we then moved on to attributes, starting with the mental attributes for Brandon Proctor. So for aggression, we got a nat 20, neat. In anticipation, roll the four. For bravery, Roll the three. For composure, that's a five. Concentration, nine. 
consistency, 17, pretty good. Decisions, that's a 13, not too bad. Determination, 10. Dirtiness, uh, 1, which that's, I guess, pretty good. Player, only a 5, which, eh, he'll grow into it, I think. Important matches, we rolled the 3, which isn't ideal, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. Leadership, got a 9. Movement, 11. Positioning, 4. But he'll be young, so leaving that as is. Teamwork, a 20, which is great. No complaints there. Vision, we initially rolled the 3, so this is where I initially made the first uh, mulligan call to go ahead and re-roll that one, just due to how dreadful it was. And thankfully, the re-roll got us a 13, so it's much better for a player of Proctor's kind of style and what we seem to be going for here. Then, to cap that off, we rolled for work rate and got a 16 out of it. Then we moved on to the physical attributes for Proctor, so not as many categories here. We'll go ahead and blaze through what I ended up getting. Acceleration, we got a 13. Agility, that was a 17. Balance, ended up at 16. Injury proneness, rolled an 11. Jumping reach, that was an 8. Natural fitness, that was also in 11. Pace, uh, 9. Stamina, well, initially, that was a 3. So, I decided to use the second mulligan of the bunch, of the 5 that I have. And it did pay off with a 20 on the reroll, so pretty impressive stuff. And then strength to cap it all off, and that was also in 11. Lastly, we rolled for the technical aspects. So to start, we did corners and got a 10. Crossing, got a 14. Dribbling, got a 19. Pretty cool. Finishing, 4. Meh, he is a midfielder, so he'll be fine with that. First touch, 18, which is great. Free kicks, 3. Heading, that's a 13. Interesting. Long shots, that's a one, so not much of a shooter. Long throws, seven. Marking, two, that's gonna be a work in progress there. Passing, 12, which is good to start off. Penalty taking, 19. So we know how he's getting all of his goals early in this career, at least. Tackling, 12. Technique, three. Versatility, 8. And that was around the time, after looking at all this, where I decided to call for the third mulligan in the technique category. And after a reroll, we got it up to a 10, so more respectable that way. After getting all the attributes done, it's night again, just run with it at this point. We ended up doing a roll for preferred moves as well. Long story short of that was something between 1 through 5 on the random generator for numbers. Ended up being a 1. We had a giant wheel for preferred moves but all of them listed. Got the 1 out of it and then from there we also ended up doing the important one which was the potential ability for the player. The total uh, current ability ended up being 127, I believe, off of what we did with the attributes. So we made that the minimum, 200 is the maximum, and then whatever we got out of that would be the potential for the player itself. And we ended up getting 166 for that, so we set that up as the potential ability for our player here. And then to wrap things up, we ended up using uh, Sorted Out SI's Club Picker at random to pick three random clubs out of it and then put those through the random wheel in order to generate who our player would be starting with. So for the three choices, it ended up being Willem 2, FC Midgeland, 
and Sparta Rotterdam. And after a spin of the wheel, it turns out that Brandon Proctor is going to Denmark to play for FC Midtjylland to start his career. So, not a bad move for him, with a fairly good team in that particular country to get his feet wet and see where the rest of his career does go from there. So we're plugging in at this point the team he's starting with when he's starting, which I believe should be January of that following year. And from here, what I'm going to be doing is just transitioning us to the start of the game itself and Brandon Proctor's initial screen so you can see how he's starting his career stats-wise after we plugged everything in and it uh, should be a pretty good look at what's to come. A few minutes later. Alright, and as you can see here are his full stats. He's played a couple of games already in his first season at the bottom center, as you can kind of see there. But uh, this kind of gives you a full look at the stats that we sorted for him, the position skills, he's starting off rated pretty well in the league that he is in, so he should hopefully have a pretty good year for himself all around. He's already picked up an assist on the first four games that he's played, so we'll see if he carries that form into the remainder of the season as a whole here. Should be an interesting experiment all around. I'm not sure what we're going to get out of it. If he's going to be a world beater of any sort. If he just kind of stays as an above average player. But then never reaches that potential. Or if injuries derail him entirely. That's kind of the fun of having a randomizer pick pretty much everything about a player. And then you just watch it as it unfolds. So without further ado, I'm just going to switch over to voiceover self here to kind of go ahead and explain what happens in year one and moving forward. So thanks again for uh, putting up with all this. Let's get to the good stuff. The first year in Brendan Proctor's career, he was able to impress the coaches at FC Midland in order to win his spot into the starting rotation, both in their 3F Superliga and UEFA Europa Conference League games. He would find his role as a contributor on the right wing with assists throughout the year, but he wouldn't find his first goal of his professional career until late February 2024, although his goal turned out to be a game winner against Ronders FC on that fateful night. He would contribute another pair of goals throughout the year to make it 3 in total, and a total of 10 assists across all competitions to complete his rookie season with 30 apps in total. Not a bad start for the young Korean Endoran, but it wouldn't be enough to help FC Midland avoid relegation. You blow it! This would cause Proctor to eventually be moved during the offseason on loan to Belgium to KRC Genk, where he would eventually split time between both their youth team and their senior team throughout the entirety of the 2024-25 season. And this is where I'd put a trophy. If I had one! The dislocated shoulder might have had something to do with that too. Ah! Unit lost. At least he got called up for the South Korean Olympic team, even if he didn't make any appearances. Sometimes you just gotta take the small wins where you can get them. Having only signed a two-year contract with FC Midland, once his loan with KRC Genk expired, he was basically set to become a free agent but that got taken care of quick, as Italian club Bologna FC 1909 decided to take a chance on the South Korean born, and while Proctor got more playing time here than in his previous stint in Belgium, a combination of injuries and depth within Bologna would keep him to only making 13 total appearances with 3 goals and 4 assists in total. But he would be part of a historic Bologna team, as Di Rosso Blue fought their way through to winning their first Coppa Italia in 52 years. Impressive. Very nice. At this point, Proctor had also already begun earning caps to the South Korean national team, and he would become a part of the 2026 FIFA World Cup roster, even scoring his first goal at the World Cup stage in a 2-1 win against Ukraine. Between helping a mid-table Italian team get into the Europa League with a cup win, and his World Cup performances, that had been enough to catch the eye of an Italian giant. AC Milan would pay £21 million to bring in Brendan Proctor, 
just as the 2027-28 Serie A season was starting. And while Proctor's first year with Ido Soneri would see most of his appearances come off from the bench, he would be trusted with a few starting appearances across Serie A and the UEFA Champions League, where he would score his first goal in the Continental competition against RB Leipzig, and also feature in AC Milan's dominant Coppa Italia winning run giving Proctor his second straight cup win in the process. Year 5 of his footballing journey saw Proctor continue to grow as a player both within AC Milan and on the international stage with South Korea, as he contributed towards his native country's AFC qualifying bid for the 2030 FIFA World Cup, along with having 23 total appearances across all competitions for Milan, helping the team in its campaigns to a second place finish in Serie A, their second straight Coppa Italia win during Proctor's stint with the team, and runner-up finishes in both the Supercoppa and the UEFA Europa League, where he assisted in the sole goal for the team. It's quite a shame too, they were leading 1-0 and then same guy ends up scoring 4 goals for Dortmund and that whole thing happens. Milan's approach appeared to be preparing Proctor for the full-time starting job, as his starting appearances grew in the 2028-29 season as he handled the bulk of starting duties in their Europa League campaign and some more starting time in Serie A. Not to mention even more international appearances with South Korea. However, a torn hamstring against Napoli in January put him on the shelf for two months and limited him to a total of 17 appearances as a starter across all competitions. While they had failed to win the Scudetto and yet again fell short of any UEFA Europa League trophy, Milan's performances under the new FIFA parameters had granted them entry into the 2029 FIFA Club World Cup, which would be hosted in Germany. And this would be the competition in which Brendan Proctor would shine, scoring six goals across the entire competition against the likes of Al Hilal, Internacional, Al Nasir, Bayern Munich, Manchester City, and Barcelona to win AC Milan their first CWC and Proctor's first major international bit of silverware. Success! That performance appeared to earn him enough trust because Proctor would go on to become a rather important player in the AC Milan plans throughout the 2029-30 season. With 35 appearances throughout the Serie A and UEFA Champions League campaigns for I Rossoneri. He would end up with a total of 7 goals and 8 assists across all competitions, but the club wouldn't see any hardware won, as their Champions League campaign was abysmal. Damn! They were upset by Sassuolo in the third round of the Coppa Italia, and they'd end up in third place in Serie A. Proctor would also be a part of South Korea's 2030 World Cup team, scoring a goal against Morocco during the competition. That was his only contribution to it all, as they get swiftly eliminated by Ivory Coast in the second round. While AC Milan's Wolves continued to cross league form in, in the Champions League, Proctor did find a way to contribute as the starting attacking winger on the right for 7 goals and 10 assists across all competitions, including the assist to Milan's game-winning goal in the Coppa Italia as they'd won the trophy for the third time in Proctor's career with the club. Milan's investment in Proctor all those years ago was at least paying off with some silverware through the last couple of years as the 2031-32 season brought the Rossoneri within 4 points of a Scudetto but with an extra side dish of heartache as they yet again arrived at the UEFA Europa League final only to see it slip through their fingers, doing the same also with the Coppa Italia that season. While Proctor contributed 9 goals and 10 assists in all competitions, a pair of twisted ankles saw his ninth season as a player be hampered by injuries at certain crucial moments. Did I mention that the Coppa Italia final loss that year happened on penalties? Because yeah, pain personified when Proctor nailed his PK only to see two people mess it up. Shameful display! Going into year 10 of his career and the prime of his powers, Proctor would reach the 10 goal marker throughout all of his caps thus far with South Korea in qualifiers for the next World Cup 
and he dated AC Milan in winning the Supercoppa during the course of the year, while contributing with 12 goals and 11 assists in 34 appearances across all competitions. But outside of the Supercoppa, it was failure city for AC Milan yet again as they couldn't get past third place in Serie A and fell short of the marker in the Champions League knockout rounds along with being knocked out by Napoli in the Coppa Italia semi-finals. It would also mark a season that end in heartbreak as a broken ankle in the Derby della Madonnina would end Proctor's season early in April 2033 and it's during this recovery process in which something unprecedented proceeds to happen. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. At the tail end of July 2033, Spanish giants Barcelona made a move and proceeded to pay a transfer fee of 60 million pounds to AC Milan in order to bring Brandon Proctor to Catalonia. Given his Andorran roots throughout his family, it was a dream come true to play so close to home. His 11th season, Proctor began his Barcelona career on the right foot with a goal and an assist in his debut as a starter against Osasuna in La Liga. But that dream would soon turn into a bit of a nightmare as inconsistent playing time only led him to having 4 goals and 5 assists in 9 starts with 17 appearances in total as Barcelona had yet again bought a player with no solid plans as to where to slot him in. It would then be a further shock when Proctor was then loaned out during the January window back to Italy, but not back to AC Milan. No, it would be Juventus that would grab him on loan and unlike Barcelona, they would let Proctor start from the jump. Proctor channeled those frustrations from the Barcelona stint into 10 goals and 3 assists during his 6 month loan stint with Juventus over 24 appearances. But yet again, Proctor seems cursed when it comes to winning league trophies as Juventus finishes the season 5 points behind eventual winners Inter Milan. But wait! There's more! Proctor would win yet another Coppa Italia in his Juventus stint and he'd help beat his former team in AC Milan to do it. The performances and effort put in by Proctor would be enough for Juventus to take a risk of their own as they proceeded to turn that 6 month loan into a permanent deal for the Korean Enduran, paying 85 million pounds in order to acquire him from the La Liga Giants. In turn, that made him the most expensive South Korean transfer in the history of world football. You know what I mean? I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. <laughs> At 30 years old and arguably the prime of his powers, Proctor would proceed to retire from international football during the offseason of his 12th year, ending his time with South Korea with 12 goals to his name and 69 caps. Nice. He would then proceed to give the old lady his absolute best individual season as of yet with 11 goals in Serie A and 13 goals in total along with 12 assists in 39 appearances across all competitions. But while he performed on an individual basis for the club, Juventus would yet again fall short by 3 points against Inter Milan in Serie A, also being knocked out by them in the Coppa Italia quarterfinals and the Supercoppa. Not to mention, a bright Champions League run was snuffed out in the round of 16 by Liverpool via a 93rd minute goal by Evan Ferguson. The follow-up year at Juventus wouldn't exactly live up to Proctor's initial 18-month stint with the club, as he only managed to muster 7 goals and 7 assists across all competitions in 39 total appearances and the club would not see any trophies won for the second straight year as Proctor fought through inconsistency and nagging injuries across the year. This would lead into the 2036-37 season and a 32-year-old Brandon Proctor now saw himself out of Juventus' future plans. Unhappy about it all, he was then transferred and loan listed by the club and that did attract some eyeballs, with Portuguese powerhouses Benfica taking a flyer and a chance on the 32-year-old winger and a £1.7 million loan for the remainder of the season. Proctor made the most out of his loan at Benfica, contributing with 12 goals and 12 assists in 44 appearances across all competitions, helping Benfica to win Allianz Cup win in the process. 
That would be the only trophy that Benfica would pick up this season though as they'd end up third place in Liga Portugal and also suffer a bitter defeat to rivals Porto in the fifth round of the Taça de Portugal. Returning back to Juventus after his loan, he'd yet again be transfer listed due to the club no longer requiring his services with one year to go on his contract. But while he wouldn't be bought out by another club, there would be a club that reached out to grab Proctor on loan for the upcoming season. Yes, in the year 2037, Wrexham has finally made the climb across the English pyramid and elevated themselves to the Premier League. And now, Brendan Proctor would be one of the worldwide players that embark on Wrexham's maiden voyage against the elite teams of world football. He would play a total of 34 games as the starting attacking midfielder on the right for the Red Dragons, contributing 6 goals and 6 assists across all competitions. But most importantly, against all odds, Proctor would be a huge contributor in ensuring that Wrexham would escape the throes of relegation in their last month and survive in 17th place in order to remain in the Premier League shortly after their arrival. It's the kind of story that only a certain documentary on its 16th or 17th season can most certainly tell and plaster a certain player's face all over it, making him quite well known to a non-footballing audience in the process. Yeah, no, nothing. There's nothing that counts. There's no space in that thing at all. But with his lone stint in Wrexham having ended, Brendan Proctor would be a free agent for the first time since leaving KRC Gank during the second year of his career. But his ability to be able to help a team like Wrexham survive in the Prem did attract some teams, as Arsenal, Al Riyadh, and even Barcelona were willing to offer him contracts. Though in a shocking maneuver, Proctor would sign a deal with French team Dijon FCO, a club that had climbed their way out of the French lower leagues and found themselves in Ligue 1 this season. The chance to start on a consistent basis was more than enough to have Proctor sign the contract. While he fought through another season of nagging injuries, Proctor managed 29 appearances in all competitions with 2 goals and 9 assists, but most importantly, his leadership and teamwork abilities were a key contributor to Dijon winning their first ever Coupe de France, beating Rennes in the final and getting them a 4th place finish in Ligue 1, ensuring them European football next season. So go figure that this is about the time in which the Saudis come for him. What? Yes, that's right. Al Hilal paid Dijon roughly £6 million for the 35-year-old Proctor on his birthday and while it would be his first time playing outside of any European leagues, for a guy who'd been growing accustomed to dealing with injuries and heading to the tail end of his career, it wasn't a bad gig. Proctor would deliver on numbers as his technical style of play flourished in the Saudi Pro League as he managed 14 goals and 17 assists across all competitions and his 43 appearances for Al Hilal, and he helped the team in winning the AFC Champions League in the process, earning his first Continental Trophy ever. His 18th season as a player for Al Hilal would see him slow down considerably though as a mixture of age and injuries such as a hamstring and groin string within a six-week period from one another led to a season with only seven goals and seven assists over 31 appearances, as Al Hilal failed to capture any trophies during the season. Season 19 would be the curtain call for Brandon Proctor as he'd call it a career after his third year with Al Hilal delivering 6 goals and 4 assists in 27 appearances for the club in all competitions. While he wouldn't help deliver any titles to one of Saudi Arabia's mightiest clubs this season, and he went the route of financial success after his stint with Dijon, Proctor would end his career having contributed to multiple teams in which he was a part of winning some sort of trophy or another, be it the multiple Coppa Italias, an Allianz Cup in Portugal, a Coupe de France, and the big ones being the AFC Champions League and a FIFA Club World Cup. It was a 19-year-long career with almost 500 appearances in over 100 goals and assists. While he may have not won any major individual hardware such as a Ballon d'Or or the big coveted European trophies, overall, Brendan Proctor is proof that a random generator 
can create one of the world's elite midfielders. And most importantly, he did it all as a bulky 5'10", 225 pound boulder of a man, proving to us all that Hossus can truly flourish. Oh, he also went into coaching immediately after his retirement, and I'm not gonna lie, I may have to send that portion of his career one day. 